Hey friends, welcome back to Great Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and this week, after four long years, we are returning to spectacular Glacier National Park up in the far northwestern corner of Montana. We're gonna bring you along the Going to the Sun Road. We're also gonna bring you to the North Fork area of the park. And finally, we're gonna share with you a wonderful boondocking spot right on the banks of the Flathead River, just a few miles outside of the West Glacier entrance of the park that unfortunately does come with a few issues of its own that we'll explain. So stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you, either on the web or in their number one ranked mobile apps. Get extra features and functionality with an annual membership to The Dirt Pro. Try it all for free for 30 days with the promo code Grand Adventure. Just like Yosemite, Zion, and Yellowstone, Glacier National Park is at risk of being loved to death. In an effort to reduce congestion and ease parking issues, the Park Service has implemented a vehicle reservation system for 2022, covering the most popular area of the park, the Going to the Sun Road Corridor, as well as the North Fork Corridor, where roads and parking areas can handle only very limited traffic. Reservations are required for the Going to the Sun Road from 6 a.m. until 4 p.m., when you can enter without a reservation. A number of reservations may be made online in advance, with the Park Service releasing a second tranche of reservations at 8 a.m. each morning, covering the following three days. You'll wear out your computer's F5 key. We first visited Glacier National Park for our very early episode 47, back in June 2018, before the 53-mile Going to the Sun Road had yet opened for the season. We were thus confined to the McDonald Lake area on our first visit. And if you'd like to see more of Glacier National Park than we're showing in this episode, we'll link to our episode 47 right here on the screen. Glacier National Park is dominated by mountains which were carved into their present shapes by the huge glaciers of the last ice age. However, these glaciers have largely disappeared over the last 12,000 years and few remain today. The Sun Road, as it is sometimes abbreviated in Park Service publications, is the only road that traverses the park, crossing the Continental Divide through Logan Pass at an elevation of 6,646 feet. It's the park's showpiece and its most popular area. Construction on the road began in 1921 and was completed in 1932 at a cost of $2.5 million. The road follows a most improbable route, and you have to wonder what made Park Superintendent George Goodwin look at this mountainside in 1917 and decide that this would be a great place to build a road. Yes, that's the road up there. As we experienced in 2018, it takes a long time to clear the road of snow each spring. Up to 80 feet of snow can lie on top of Logan Pass, and more just east of the pass where the deepest snowfield has long been referred to as the Big Drift. The road takes about 10 weeks to plow, even with equipment that can move 4,000 tons of snow in an hour. The snowplow crew can clear as little as 500 feet of the road per day. Calling going to the sun a two-lane road is a bit of a stretch. For along its narrow and winding path, there are numerous spots where two opposing vehicles cannot easily pass. Thanks to its hairpin turns, vehicle lengths over the highest portions of the roadway are limited to no longer than 21 feet and no wider than 8 feet. Vehicles over 10 feet in height may also find challenges at bedrock that in places overhangs the road.
we rounded a turn in a walkway near the top of Logan Pass and nearly tripped over this Montana loco and her kid. It was not our intention to get this close to wildlife, so we were thankful that she was quite friendly and apparently accustomed to the presence of people. The descent east of Logan Pass is wider and straighter than the climb on its west side, but the scenery is no less stunning. For our visit to Glacier National Park, we're boondocking on a gravel bar of the Middle Fork Flathead River at Blankenship Bridge, only five miles from the park's West Glacier entrance. It's a popular spot, particularly on the weekend, when many others are sharing this spot with the YouTube channel Homie at Large, our Texan friends Daryl and Jane, and our fifth wheel. We wouldn't think about trying to get anything longer than our 33-foot trailer in here thanks to a crazy tight turn near the bridge. And any motorhome without substantial ground clearance should bypass this spot as well. We dragged the rear cargo shelf behind our trailer not once, but twice on the way in. But if your RV is of the right type and size, this is a stunning place to camp. One thing that folks should realize before camping at Blankenship Bridge is that the situation with locals here has become contentious. They've urged the Forest Service to close this site to camping, and they've even sued the Forest Service to try to get what they want. The Forest Service has thus far resisted. And during our stay, a federal judge declined to grant the plaintiffs an injunction to close the site while the lawsuit plays out. But this site is part of an upcoming Comprehensive Forest Service review of managing the entire river corridor. We were even harassed by one local seeking to intimidate us into leaving. But as you have seen, his efforts failed miserably.
We've successfully avoided the heat thus far this summer, but it's finally caught up to us here in northern Montana, where our campsite even hit 102 degrees one afternoon this week. Back in episode 243, we reviewed the Mark II low-power air conditioner from Zero Breeze, and a number of our grand adventurers asked for a follow-up real-life experience. This is the first we've broken out the device this summer, and it cools our bedroom very effectively. It's a bit more challenged in these temperatures by our larger living room. So instead, I've aimed the duck at my face while working in the afternoon, and it's kept me comfortable while powering it from our solar and lithium batteries. We'll put a link right here on the screen to our episode 243 if you'd like to learn more. Who doesn't like to save money while camping? Our video sponsor, The Dirt Pro, offers discounts of up to 40% at over 1,000 campgrounds all across the U.S., and up to 30% off select outdoor brands. Get a free 30-day trial of all of the Dirt's Pro features just for being a grand adventurer, including not only these discounts, but also campsite directories, trip planning, and public land and cell service map layers, just by using the promo code Grand Adventure. So what do you have to lose? Click the link below in the video description to try the Dirt Pro for free today. Daryl, Jane, and I plan to kayak Swift Current Lake on Saturday, a two-hour drive from camp on the opposite side of the Million Acre National Park. However, when we arrived, we were turned away at the Many Glacier Ranger Station because parking in that sector was already full. We then tried to Medicine Lake, where we encountered an electronic sign announcing no watercraft permitted. So four hours after leaving camp, we were back at camp without having kayaked anything. Fortunately, I had obtained a vehicle reservation for the park's North Fork Corridor a day earlier. A vehicle reservation is required for the North Fork Corridor from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. And even though they're very limited due to the nature of the roads up here, they're easier to get than a reservation for going to the Sun Road. They're also only good for one day instead of three. That brought us to the stunningly clear waters of Bowman Lake, a mere 10 miles from the Canadian border where, much to our delight, once leaving the immediate beach area at the end of the road, we found ourselves entirely alone on the lake. To top it off, the afternoon lighting was perfect. In the end, we could not have been more fortunate.
When we left Salt Lake City back on May 1st, we were accompanied by Homie at large, and we expected that caravan to last two, maybe three weeks. Here we are, three full months later in Glacier National Park, and we're still together. And for the past two episodes, we've been joined by our friends Daryl and Jane. However, after those wonderful three months, we are now finally all heading, scattering in different directions. Uh, it's been a wonderful three months with these friends and they've been so helpful to us. We've been able to help them with other things and that's one of the beauties of RV travel when you're traveling with other folks. However, we are striking off on our own now for the remainder of the season until just before the very end. We've actually already hatched plans to reconnect on one of our last stops for a few nights and we are already looking forward to that opportunity. We truly hope that you've enjoyed traveling with us to Glacier National Park. If you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, you're going to find the comment section, and we always love to hear from you after each grand adventure that we air every Wednesday evening. We would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. But if you are not yet a grand adventurer yourself, this is the perfect time for you to go smash that little red subscribe button. It's the one right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.